morning, everyone. I'm Maria Bartiromo. Welcome to the business of innovation. What is innovation? It's a breakthrough. It's a new idea. It's something you've never seen before. Yeah, but how does a company become innovative? Can you ask the right question? Over the next five weeks on the business of innovation, we're going to get at the heart of an often complicated subject, one that is on the minds of leaders across the globe. The concept of innovation often seems to produce more questions than answers. But as the ancient Greeks sought consultation from the oracles, our resident guide, or oracle if you will, Dr. Roger Shank is here to offer us some predictions and guidance. Tonight, we've brought together a few groundbreakers who broke free and are now some of the most prestigious names in business. In the rough and tumble world of air travel, Howard Putnam is a champion. One of the early leaders at Southwest Airlines, he helped the company spread its wings. For the last two decades, Vinod Kosla has been one of the preeminent venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. Kathleen Black has been called the first lady of American magazines. Arkady Coleman is not your grandfather's banker, and ING Direct is anything but a traditional bank. So give me the most important thing when all of you, in terms of running your businesses, what you look at in terms of fostering innovation. Howard. I think it starts with the CEO. Kathleen, the most important in terms of fostering innovation at the company? To ban the phrase, we tried that and it didn't work. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> when you talk about innovative companies and leadership, you need look no farther than Virgin and its boss, Richard Branson. For Richard Branson, taking risks is in his blood. From his attempts to circle the earth by balloon to launching a business that aims to bring tourists to the moon, it's Branson's brand of extreme living and extreme entrepreneurship that has shaped Virgin. Roger, I'd imagine you to be a Branson fan. He's done unique things, asks unique questions, definitely took risks, goes against the grain. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, absolutely. I'm a Branson fan. I, I once saw, I was asked to make up a word, and I made up the word creative, for <laughs> creative with active. That's what he's got. Now more than ever, a flood of market change will be impacting businesses across the globe. It really is innovate or die. With that expectation in mind, we've brought in some experts in the field of innovation and change to help us stem the tide and get you into the innovation fast lane. I'm joined now by Polly Labar, Tom Kelly, and Jim Carroll. The innovation mandate is here. How do you get the right people in place to make sure your company is innovating? You gotta first have the humility, if you're on the senior management team, to acknowledge that the right people aren't all in the boardroom with you. What I try to explain to folks is, you know, look, innovation is about everything we do in the business. It's about looking at your business. How can we run the business better? What things can we do to better you know, grow the business? What can we do to transform the business? There's such a bias in business when it comes to innovation that big ideas come from big brains. Uh, that, that when it comes to innovation, the boss really is the smartest guy in the room. If you got the boss as the smartest person in the room, you got the wrong boss. Exactly. <laughs> Does the innovation start at the top with the CEO? No, it's, you know, it's the only thing the CEO does is let you feel like you have the right to voice your idea. Once upon a time, there was this idea, an idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. And for more information on our programs, go to innovation.cnbc.com for videos, transcripts, and more.